Okay, let's go ahead and now do a conclusion for a two sample hypothesis testing with proportions. So instead, maybe we're looking at the proportion of students who play basketball um, between these two schools. And so we did this whole thing, and let's go ahead and dive into it. Oh, and I need a confidence interval real quick. We'll do a confidence interval equals, we'll do point. Oh, 5 comma point or you know we'll do negative point oh five comma negative point oh three. All right, and I wanted those negatives in there just so that we can do a little bit different uh, here. Okay. So let's go ahead and write out our confident or our conclusion statement. So we can say that we have collected sufficient, sufficient data. And then I'm going to put in my chi-squared, and that is 1 comma n equals 50. So this is the sample size. This is the number of groups minus one. So we had two groups, minus one, and just one. Uh, and then we'll say that that equals 5.1 comma p equals 0 0.04 comma alpha equals 0 0.05. To reject the claim, that the true proportion of students who play basketball at the two schools is the same and instead conclude that they are different. Okay, so because our p-value was less than alpha, I was able to reject my null hypothesis. And I need to include in here my population. So who is it? It's these students at these two schools? I could get I could get even more specific. So it's that the students at the at Prairie High School and Summit High School. And it's the true proportion of students who play basketball. That's my parameters. And I've been able to conclude that they were different because that is what my alternative hypothesis actually was. Okay, if this was insignificant, so if I had like a p-value of 0 0.09 or something, then I would, the only thing that I'd have to change is that we have collected insufficient evidence uh, to reject the claim that the true proportion of students who play basketball at the two schools is the same. And then I could get rid of this and instead conclude that they are different. Um, so it's a lot shorter if we have insignificant evidence. Now, if we have sufficient data, uh, we need to also remember still include the confidence interval. So we can go down here and say that we are 95% confident. Now remember it's not always 95, it's 95 because our alpha is 5%. So 95% confident that the true proportion Portion of students who play, play basketball at Prairie is between. Okay. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. 
So notice how these are negative symbols right here. Now, you might be saying, whoa, wait a second. I thought we were dealing with proportions and probabilities. I thought we couldn't have like a negative proportion. Now, note here that it's not a negative proportion. It's how much smaller one proportion is than the other. So we are smaller by between 3 to 5 percentage points. Or, yeah, is between. We'll do point um, zero three to point zero five less than that of something. And that's how we'd handle this with proportions. So if we had done a one-tail test, remember if this had been instead a greater than symbol or a less than symbol, our conclusion would have been able to say that one of these was bigger than the other or smaller than the other because we had actually made that in our, um, in our alternative hypothesis. And if we had done a one-tail test, remember we would say that it's at least however much more or no more than this much less th than the others. Anyhow, uh, we'll do more and more practice on this. And, uh, but this is the basic format of how we write these conclusions uh, with our categorical data when we are doing two sample proportions tests.